Yeah. Light heavyweight division. What? You moving up, man. Who would you want to fight next? Since he's just coming back right now, he needs uh, he needs one or two more fights um, to get back in rhythm. He's getting back in rhythm, and then maybe the third, fourth fight, he's gonna you know he's gonna look for a tougher, tougher challenge. So. Okay, sure go. Oh, he did, man. How, how hard was that long layoff? You're talking about getting back in rhythm, but you spent nearly two years out of the ring. It was 23 months inactive, so he feels that it was a, a very long time for him um, coming from obviously fighting. So he, he'll like to get to fighting every two months, maybe every three months to get back in that rhythm. What problems, if any, did tonight's opponent pose for him? ¿Qué problema, qué problema tuviste hoy? Si tuviste algún problema. Ah, um, um, un poquito de desesperación porque en el primer round le di el knockdown y, y como que me como que me desesperé un poco por tratar de de noquearlo. So after the, he knocked down the boxer on the first round, he got kind of anxious to get back really quick and try to pretty much knock him down again. So he kind of got a little bit desperate. He should have held back and maybe waited a little bit more. With with the time he's had off. Is it important to him to be very active this year? Does he want to get right back in there? Well, yeah, he just mentioned that. Yes. He wants to get yes. back every two months. Every two months we're going to get him in there. We're going to try to get him in there. He's 32 years old, so what is his development like as a prospect right now in terms of building up into contention and eventually a title shot? Well, I can answer that one. Yeah. Well, let, okay. let him answer. Okay. Let him answer. Tell him. Explain it to him. What do you think about your preparation? He's the boxer. Ya que tienes 32 años. Eres un buen prospecto, pero ¿qué opinas de tu preparamiento y tu entrenamiento? ¿Y ¿Cómo piensas llegar a ese nivel, a ese próximo nivel? No, eh, con, con mi equipo de trabajo, eh, vamos a ir poco a poco y 32 años yo creo que, que todavía estoy joven, me siento bien y no he cogido mucho golpe, que es una cosa también que, que, que afecta a los ahora que tienen 30, 30 y tantos años, pero tienen no sé cuántas peleas profesionales. So, yo tengo muchas peleas amateur, pero no, pero profesional, no, no he cogido mucho golpe. Me siento bien, creo que maybe un año nosotros estamos peleando peleas grandes. Ya. He believes that at 32 years old, he's, a, he's, he's, he's still in top shape. I think he's at the prime of his career right now. Um, with the training that he's doing, with you know schedule, the schedule that he's setting up for himself, with the training Milton, myself, I'm part of his management, but um, he believes that, with, again, within a year or so, he should be fighting for a title. Can you tell me why he was out for almost two years until this past December? ¿Por qué estuviste afuera dos años? ¿Qué quieres decir? Problema, problemas de promoción. Yo estaba firmado con Arena Box. Julio Quigamboa era mi mejor amigo, mi hermano. Y a la Arena Box romper. A Julio Quigamboa romper con Arena Box y firmar con 56. Eso de cierta forma, de cierta manera, me afectó a mí. He was signed to the same promotional company as uh, Eurorkis Gamboa. I don't know if you guys are aware of that. Um, after Eurorkis Gamboa broke relations with uh, Arena Box, which was a promotional company, um, I guess it was he got the bad end of it, where he wasn't given any fights and was pretty much frozen by the promotional company. So now he's off with that, and uh, he's ready to get it back in there and fight. His favorite fighter. Muhammad Ali, the best fighter in history. You got uh, Agus Klamas as his advisor, right? Correct. So what does Agus bring to the team and has he been working with Sergey Kovalev at all? Uh, I can answer that question sure. part of management. He hasn't been working with Sergey. Uh, we, we were asked to spar with him, we, we, we chose not to at this time. Uh, we believe that he might be a, uh, again, a, 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 a prospect contender or, or opponent.
opponent a future in the opponent. future, a future opponent. So uh, Aegis, it's, it's been doing great for us, doing great with us, working with main events. It's very thankful. We're very thankful. We're thankful for the opportunity, pretty much. So you're thinking of Kovalev as a future opponent. What does he think of Kovalev as a fighter? Yo también me considero un gran peleador. Creo que muchos de los oponentes que han salido, que han salido a pelear con él, han salido con temor. No es mi caso. Y creo que en un futuro vamos a dar buena pelea y, y yo voy a, a dar lo mejor y a, y a, y a tratar de ganar el campeonato. Uh, he believes Sergey is a, it's a great boxer. Um, he believes that a lot of his opponents have gone into the ring with him with maybe kind of suspect, a little bit of fear. Um, which is not the case with him. He's fearless. He'll go in there. He believes also that he's a great pop boxer. And uh, in a couple of uh, in a couple of fights, we hope to see him. Tell me, can you rate these three light heavyweights in order? Cold of Adonis Stevenson and Bernard Hopkins. Dime del uno al tres. ¿Quién qué piensas tú que primero, segundo y tercero? Stevenson, Kovalev, and who? Bernard Hopkins. And Hopkins. Um, para 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 mí el número uno a veces Stevenson número uno Sergey Kovalev Kovalev número dos Bernard Hopkins Two two hundred two hundred two hundred eighty seven almost three hundred yeah. twenty seven no champion the world